To become a legend inside those four white lines is no easy task. Most had to fight for the ball because that's where the spotlight shines. Defenders had to perform thousands of clean tackles, keepers dozens of unimaginable saves, strikers had to provide a never-ending supply of goals. But there was one man who became a legend in one of the most recognizable faces in the sport without ever touching the ball. Today we're gonna find out how exactly one becomes the most feared, the most respected and by far the most legendary referee in the world, even making the cover of Pro Evolution Soccer. A one becomes Pierluigi Colina. Watching Colina go about his job was as impressive as watching any of the superstars he shared the pitch with. It wasn't just that he seemed to never get a decision wrong, with the sight of a falcon and cold-headed as they got, it was the way he handled the players. He was capable of telling off anyone, even a maniac like Oliver Kahn bowed down to him like a newborn puppy being reprimanded for munching down on your favorite pair of slippers. But in fact, over time he didn't even need to do any of that. So much was the respect for him that the players already knew not to mess around when he was watching. After all, with that deep blue stare aimed right at you, it's hard not to feel intimidated. But don't get me wrong, Colina wasn't just a mindless tough guy of any sort, he was a diplomat. The players loved to chat around with him and on the toughest of moments, he was even capable of showing off his more tender side, helping out the players whenever they needed. He really was the best of both worlds. But how did he get there? As you might imagine, Colina wasn't actively looking for this job. Despite his passion for basketball, just like many other referees, he was trying to make it as a football player first. But Colina was realistic. He knew that the chances were slim, especially as he never found himself to be the most talented. At first, he just made sure to cover his bases, continually working hard in school, where he actually got taught by nuns. And then, he even took a step back. Quite literally, actually. He began playing as a center back as he found he had the best chances of making it in that position since not many kids are willing to play there and it requires a different set of skills. But have you ever asked yourself what team a referee supports or if they're even allowed to? Well, as a teenager Colina followed two teams, whoever Walter Zenga played for and Lazio. Though at first he was a Bologna fan, as he grew up he fell in love with a team known as the Lazio Pistols, which demands a quick intermission. You see, this team was as scary as it gets. No wonder Colina loved them so much. Let me give you a quick summary. So, pretty much two main figures of the dressing room get into an argument and things get so bad that the team was divided into two factions, depending on which player they sided with. They grew apart so much that they even had different locker rooms. The tensions began rising so fast that players began carrying pistols everywhere to protect themselves from the other players. They were pretty much like a gang, you heard that 100% right. The crazy thing is that when it came to the actual matches, they blended seamlessly and displayed some great football, even going on to somehow win the league for the first time in the history of the club. Despite the fact that back in the locker room, players were literally threatening each other's lives with broken glass bottles. This is easily one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. Comment down below if you think I should make a video on it. But yeah, back to Colina. Despite his known passion for Lazio, he has made sure to say in an interview that it never influenced his decision, so much so that Lazio never won in the first 10 of their matches he officiated. At 17 years of age, things were not looking very promising when he came to his footballing career. And that's when an interesting offer arose. It was suggested to him that maybe he should take part in a refereeing course and very quickly everyone was surprised at his natural talents. Colina already displayed every bit of the charisma he has gotten us used to. Over the next few years, his life was a mess, imagine the stress he must have gone through. Colina was 20 when he finally got to officiate his first few regional matches, but meanwhile, he was also completing his degree in economics and completing his mandatory military service, which further developed his sense of authority and discipline. After all, growing up with a mother who was a teacher, a dad who worked in the Ministry of Defense and being taught by nuns in primary school wasn't enough, right? Among all of this, he rapidly got promoted to the Italian 3rd Division. It was impressive how fast he was progressing in his career, everyone admired him already, but then he had to go through one of the toughest moments in his life. As he was about to finish his service, Colina developed a form of alopecia and after only 10 days, he had lost every bit of air in his body. 
To make matters worse, this came about around the same time the Italian Federation planned to move him up to Serie A and Serie B. There was some worry that the disease would affect his confidence and that he wouldn't be able to perform as he used to, but Colina is different. If it affected his self-esteem in any way, it surely made it so no one would be aware. To the audience, especially looking back now, he seemed like a Dragon Ball character who had just reached his final form. Standing at 6 foot 2, Colina was as imposing as most center backs, but now bald, it seemed his deep blue eyes were more piercing than ever and his new look also earned him his nickname Kojak, like the bald detective from the TV show of the same name, which, given his love for pistol whipping footballers, I'm sure Colina appreciated. Four years later in 1995, after having refereed only 43 top-flight matches in Italy, Colina was put on FIFA's referees list. Once again, the rapid pace at which he progressed through his career was frightening. It was like the Erling Haaland of referees. Even more impressively, he was immediately allocated to five matches in the 1966 Olympics, including the final between Nigeria and Argentina, an absolute classic of African football where Okosha and Kanu led their team as they went behind twice and still managed to win it on injury time. Following this, Colina took part in the 1998 World Cup where, despite not getting to officiate the final, he left a mark, sending off Clivert in a heated group stage match against Belgium. If that time he didn't get to be in the final, the next year it was a whole different story. After numerous great performances in the Champions League and after being awarded the IFFHS Referee of the Year Award in 1998, Colina was selected for the 1999 UCL final, only four years after his first call-up by FIFA. What was the secret of his success? Well, besides his demeanor, he was also fluent in different languages, being able to communicate with any player with ease, which allowed him to more easily empathize with them. But above all, what set him apart was his preparation for the matches. He took it all a step further. He would study the formations and styles of play, assessing which players were most likely to clash during the game. He gathered information on which players are most likely to fake injuries, dive or get physical with others. His philosophy is that a referee can't be caught off guard. You have to know when and how the players will act before they do. It was with this philosophy that he helped UEFA reduce the number of yellow cards shown in their tournaments. In a way, he set the foundation for modern refereeing. But back to the 1999 UCL final, this match left a mark on everyone, easily one of the most dramatic UCL finals of all time. Bayern faced United and 5 minutes in, Bayern were in front. The lead lasted all the way to injury time, but then, somehow, United struck twice in quick succession, snatching the trophy from Bayern when they were convinced it was already theirs. If the shears from United players were what marked most people, Colina had to deal with both sides of the match. As he told it himself, the United players were running like madmen all over the pitch, but then I turned around and found that most Bayern players were crying and laying down on the floor hopeless. I saw Samuel Kufur completely distraught. I went up to him and I couldn't think of what to say besides get up and keep fighting. There's still 20 seconds left on the clock. Football is a cruel sport. Its unpredictability makes it seem like at times it takes away what was already yours. Kufur feels exactly that way. After all these years, he still tells the press that he hasn't looked at any of the footage from that game, saying, it still hurts to think of it. I have to let it go, but it's still haunting me to this day. On the other hand, Colina had to walk through what seemed like a battlefield, picking up the ones left wounded. No player was left in phase. Even the great Khan, the one of the few left standing, was found with a stare of someone wishing to go back in time. Colina would recall this moment saying, That day I saw the true face of football, where all players give their lives for it, but only half get rewarded with people shouting their names in joy, and the rest lay down, hurting to their core. That's really dark. <laughs> Over the next three years, Colina took part in the Euro 2000 and was bound to take center stage at the 2002 World Cup. Along the way, he grew more and more in notoriety and racked up three more awards for IFFHS Referee of the Year. 
At the World Cup he officiated three matches, two of them being purposely picked for him due to the difficulty involved. The first of which was England vs Argentina. Ever since 1986, with Maradona scoring the infamous end of God during the Falklands War between both countries, relationships had been tense. And it only got worse as in the previous World Cup the deciding moment came with David Beckham sending off after a foul on Diego Simeone. If once the fans' anger was directed at each other, a share of it was now for the referee, but Colina was having none of it, and finally the match went by smoothly with England taking the win and sending Argentina out of the tournament. The second of those matches was of course the final between Brazil and Germany, but first, some background. Colina had an odd relationship with Oliver Kahn, having to order around a man like their titan wasn't easy, especially when he lost, so the fact that Colina managed to maintain a relationship with him that was based on the utmost respect for his authority became even more impressive when it started being noticed that Kahn would always lose whenever Colina officiated his matches. From the UCL final to the Euros and even a 5-1 demolition by England in the qualifying stages, the link had been settled and Khan was aware of it. Before the match he was asked about Colina and famously said, he is a world-class referee, there is no doubt about that, but does he bring me any luck? Clearly not. And this time it wouldn't be any different, two goals by Ronaldo in quick succession would send Khan home without any silverware. As Colina kept crossing off every big game from his bucket list, the next one in line was the UEFA Cup Final. This was easily the big game he influenced the most, having to show Fabian Barthez a red card and giving away a penalty right before halftime, opening the way for Valencia's eventual 2-1 win. Over the summer he took part in the Euros yet again, but didn't get awarded with a chance to officiate the final, and with FIFA's referee age limit coming the following year, he was destined to never cross the Euro final from his list. But then came a moment that proved just how legendary he truly was. So much was his popularity that the Italian Federation raised their own age limit to allow for Colina to keep on officiating for an extra year. However, it all came crashing down soon, in an unfortunate manner. Colina had signed a sponsorship deal with Opel, and given they were also the sponsors of AC Milan, the whole thing was seen as a conflict of interest, and the Federation decided he wasn't allowed to referee any top flight matches as long as this deal was still on. So, Colina filed in his resignation letter and then the Federation tried rejecting it, but what could they do? Colina just pretended like nothing happened and carried on with his retirement, which might be the biggest power move ever. But his coolest moment was yet to come. In 2006, he still managed to make headlines for his integrity. The biggest scandal in Italian football history came to light, known as the Calciopoli scandal, where referees were paid to fix matches for all sorts of reasons. At the center of the whole thing was a man named Luciano Moggi, who, by the way, definitely deserves a video as well. This man nearly destroyed the Serie A with his schemes. What do you guys think? Should I, should I do it? Regardless, once his calls leaked, them near every referee in the league could be heard taking bribes and favors from him. But guess who stood his ground rejecting everything they threw at him no matter the amount? Pierluigi Colina. This incredible man was always picked to referee the biggest matches in the league and he still remained honest through all this corruption, which infuriated Moji, so much so that he could be heard in a call saying that he was going to punish Colina for his decisions against Juventus. I think we all know what that means. But of course this absolute madman stayed completely unfazed and kept on being 100% unbiased. If only they were all like Colina. After all, he is a six-time IFFHS Referee of the Year winner, two times more than anyone else, a member of the Italian Football Hall of Fame and to this day, the only referee ever to swap a shirt with a player, being handed David Beckham's number 7 shirt at the request of Sir Alex Ferguson. So yeah, this was Pierluigi Colina's career in a video, if you enjoyed, please, please, please like the video, it takes one second and makes me so happy, I'll see you next week, bye.